Hello, it's another opportunity to tell you all that's happened in the arts, culture, and leisure worlds in recent time. My name is Chioma Okwara. Welcome to Art and Leisure. First, let's invite the Boyaso State Cultural Troupe for a rich performance. Stick around. <laughs> Welcome back from Bayaso State, the pride of the nation. In Lagos, 25 artists in whom the milk of human kindness flows donated their works to a foundation in order to help raise funds for children afflicted with cancer. So what we're about to see is a charity exhibition of paintings and sculptures. Stay. The 25 artists are of different ages and from different backgrounds. They employed different media like oil on canvas, mixed media, oil on gele, acrylic on canvas, pen and ink, pastel on paper, fiberglass, metal, terracotta, serigraphy and plastograph in the execution of these works. The art pieces address different issues. The work is titled Grass to Grace. It's talking about the you know, progress we make in life. Everybody prays to be successful in his or her chosen career. You see, in the painting, I try to depict somebody who started from the scratch. If you have interviewed a successful businessman or somebody who has made it in life, you know, the advice they will give you is that one has to be consistent they normally say that hard work pays, and truly it pays. You see, walking from the grass, now he has landed, he has acquired the wet. When you have acquired that wet, you need to help people. These artists are supporting a cause they believe in. You know, first we are looking at giving back to the society that are, has also supported us for a while. That our kids don't have cancer doesn't mean we don't have to help the other kids, you know. And um, we also want to give other helping hand so that other people from uh, not just visual art, maybe performing art and all of that, should also go relief from this and uh, see what they can do for these kids, you know. Children Living with Cancer Foundation was set up to cater for the welfare and medication of children battling with cancer whilst providing support for their families. As a resident at a Lagos University Teaching Hospital, I came across children who had cancer and their families. The most interesting thing about these families was that 90% of them had no clue whatsoever that children could have cancer before their own children came down with cancer. So one of you know, the people that inspired this foundation, the father was so upset with me when I told him that we need to investigate the child for leukemia. 
And then lo and behold, at the end of the day, the child actually had leukemia. The child started chemotherapy, achieved remission, and um, was supposed to come back you know, every three weeks for more chemotherapy. But the parents had exhausted all they had and went to church. Now I'm a Christian. I believe in miracles. When they took the child away, the child didn't come back until the day before the child passed on. I was actually on call that day. By the time I went back in the morning to see the child before going home, the child had passed on. It was a very, very painful experience for me. Dr. Mwobi says that cancers in children are curable, but encourages patients to report early at the hospital. What are those things that people need to do to prevent it? Is it preventable? Not totally in children, because even in children, one you know, cannot say this, this, this are uh, the causes. We are, we are still more like, you know, hypothesis. This, this, this can cause or is associated. What is obtained abroad is having constant um, screening for things like uh, neuroblastoma. This art exhibition is to create awareness on child cancer and also raise money in order to pay medical bills for poor patients. The works that are being sold here definitely will go a long way in helping us with the chemotherapy drugs that uh, our children need. My vision really is to see a time when every child, every Nigerian child that goes into any hospital in, in Nigeria, any tertiary institution in Nigeria, gets free medical treatment. Those who made out time to see the exhibition are impressed by the creativity of the artists. Fantastic uh, pieces. Um, I mean, there's lots of variety, but uh, but really, really good, good, interesting uh, art. Both the paintings and the sculptures are they're really good. The works are lovely, and uh, it shows a lot of things. Like the one I'm looking at right now, and it's talking about uh, the woman. You know, the face is uh, shown into shades. One shows a lot of pain and scars that we use things to cover. One, the other side shows, like, sometimes you see us, we are perfect, like, you look, we look perfect. But beneath the perfection hides a lot of pain and heartache. The proceeds from the sale of these works we go to Children Living with Cancer Foundation. The artists are optimistic that lives will be saved by this gesture. That's the kind of cause you support, and only God can reward you. Well done, our kind-hearted artists. The federal government also supports visual artists through the National Gallery of Art. NGA, as it is popularly called, is 20 years old. I visited the director general in his Abuja office, and what I'm about to share with you is what he told me. Stay. The National Gallery of Art was established in 1993, Mr. Abdullahi Muku is a pioneer staff. He rose through the ranks and was appointed the acting director general in 2009. In March 2011, he was made the director general. The parastatal's mandate is clear. The gallery was essentially charged with the acquisition of uh, base of Nigerian works of art for the permanent exhibitions and also organizing uh, competition and talent hunt also to receive donations of works of art on behalf of uh, government and sponsoring uh, research. NGA enumerates some of its achievements in its 20 years of existence. We have had several international exhibitions and all with the intention of trying to uh, kind of uh, uh, promote the visual arts outside the country. And we carry out so many exhibitions within the country. In fact, I remember in 1996 when uh, Professor Jerry Gana was the Minister of Culture and Tourism then, we organized an exhibition on Gawang and Zeke. That was in uh, Mosul Center, Lagos. It was well attended 
and I think Professor Jerry Gara was so overwhelmed that he now said uh, Dasha Gala will be holding this exhibition on an annual basis to mark uh, Nigeria Day celebration. So we've been having that, we've been carrying that exhibition. We did uh, more than 10 editions. Then we were able to open up studio and workshops across the country. The Pioneer DG was able to open up uh, first the National Hall of Fame in, in Mina, which uh, of course is still under construction. And the Hall of Fame is meant to uh, house Nigerian achievers in all the uh, facets uh, of life. Then he established the Christian Gallery of Art in Uyo. Then he also established uh, the Islamic Gallery in uh, Sokoto. Non specialized galleries too were open. We had one in Umuahia and in Maiduguri. In 20 years, the gallery has been able to open up to uh, 24 stations across the country. At least we're in 24 states. We train some school leavers, uh, some even primary school and secondary school students in, in visual art every two Saturdays of the month, which is Tag Sat, uh, Saturday Art Club. We carry out uh, a lot of uh, conferences. Uh, in fact, for now, you'll be surprised to hear that uh, Gallery has no less than 18 publications to each uh, credit which I doubt if there is any process of government that can boast of that. And I want to say here that before the gallery was established, our artists and art school majorly relied on foreign materials to operate. With the existence of gallery, we've been able to provide a lot of foreign materials for artists and the general public, art lovers and you know, art schools. In two decades, the National Gallery of Art has had three director generals. The past two top officials had ideas and executed some projects. Is continuity the natural order of things here? Most of our uh, galleries program, we've continued them, uh, except Arisuva. We have this art expo that we've had up to the sixth edition. Uh, we have uh, this uh, Niva tour, which is the National Visual Art World Tour. We have had the second edition. We've gone for some art expos that we've been going outside the country. We've been attending the Dakar Biennial, which has, is one of our uh, international programs. For Arisuva, what happened was that uh, initially it was said to have been captured by AU, and, and it was more like an African uh, affair. AU had its uh, meeting in Nigeria here. We tried to see who could extract where it was adopted. We discovered that that was not even adopted by AU at all. For that, we, we felt we can talk about a biennial that will be about the, the entire world instead of restricting to just African nations. 2014 is a busy year for the National Gallery of Art. We have not less than uh, 15 programs uh, this year. Hopefully, if we are able to attract the funding, and we have tried not to rely on government only because, you know, art worldwide is something that uh, you need to bring the private sector into it too. The National Gallery of Art resolves to remain committed to the collection, preservation, documentation and presentation of the nation's contemporary art. <laughs>
He's actually new to the world. He's a new Christian. So that's, and Michael is um, after my dad. Kainos is their fourth child and they are joining us no bound. I feel quite elated. Barrister Mrs. Inhuku Mere shares her pregnancy experience with us. Before conception, I asked God for a special child. So through the pregnancy period to delivery period, everything points to the fact that the baby is special and wonderful. It's a child that is growing in leaps and bounds. From all indications, the way he behaves, people see him and think he's older than his age. In fact, I'm proud to have him. At the Household of God Church, Pastor Chris Okotie blessed and dedicated Kainos and other babies to God. Our Father in the name of the Lord Jesus, we lay hands on this book. I will come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. To my dear child, who grows on the scripture, able to make their father to establish faith in Christ Jesus. Make them the head, not the tail, that the blessing of the Lord Jesus come on. Keep them from sickness, from sin, from disease. Keep the parents all the need to train others to learn the way of the Lord. And when they are old, Thereafter, family and friends celebrated with them. The grandparents left all to be with their grandson on this important occasion. This is uh, a child that came at the right time. I give God all the glory. I feel happy and excited. The young child resembles the father, who also resembles me. I will say it's an answered prayer. But the other three girls are so precious to us. They are so precious. And this one, I am calling it an added prestige to the family. So I'm happy about it. God answered my prayer. In fact, I prayed for it. I feel very much happy. This boy brought very much joy to me, being the first male child from happy. I feel very much happy. I feel very happy today. The Hunku Mere family is a large one. With open arms, they welcomed this new addition. It's a happy thing to, to have a new baby especially the one we have here. And uh, you, as you can see, everybody's happy. We are all happy for the new baby. It means we are growing bigger. We are, we are multiplying more and more. Kainos Michael Ogechi Hukumere is seen by all as a child destined for greatness. His parents promised to nurture and guide him well. You could tell everyone had a nice time. Congratulations, engineer and barrister Mrs. Ihuku Mere. Okay, now I'm going to show you a place you must visit at least once in your lifetime. Idori Hills in Akure, Ondo State. Let's go. I hired a cab from the main town to Idori, a near smooth winding road, but for intermittent bumps. In about 30 minutes, I was at Idori, the historic town in Ondo State. Owosheni, an excursion officer, lectures me on the features of this story site. He's not new on the job, so he's not bothered about the faded ink on the board. He knows the 11 attraction spots by heart. The grey step is the one you're about to climb now. Formerly, it was 160 steps with five resting points along the road. But with the new construction now, we are having about 660 steps with the same five resting points. Agbogo footprints is a magical footprint on the rock. The tourist chalet is meant for lodging to keep your night at the top of the hill. The ancient palace built about 800 years ago. Either the people lived for good 800 years at the top of the hill before they came down to the present place in 1928. It was civilization that brought them down. You know, because of civilization, the present that here might be at the top of the hill. 
the unreadable letters, we call it hieroglyphs, the striking of the light coming from the rock forming some other beds. We have petroglyphs. Petroglyphs is a form of a diagram. The wonderful man placed on the hill over there dangling Omiakwara and Aron River, unique in the sense of the therapy effect is having in the body. We believe it's healing. When you dip yourself inside and bath with it, Alaga E2 is unique in the scientific form of canopy. You know what we call a Buddha in geography? The splitting of a part of a big rock to form another shape entirely. So it's in form of a cave. The old court and the old primary school built in the year 1896. Idori Hills measure about 50 kilometers in radius. It will take a tourist three days to cover the entire hills. I seem prepared to climb the 660 steps and AD, another excursion officer, is willing to go all the way with me. I dragged Joshua along. He's a fan. Covered 70 steps. steps. Mr. Eddie, my tour guide, will talk to us about this place. Here's the cave. The structure is a government object. This is where we can really relax your body when there is fun and rain. It's a cave. 70 steps covered, 590 more to go. This is a walk amidst beautiful hills of different sizes. The work of nature is spellbinding. Eddie tells me that water pebble was used for the steps. We've covered 260 steps. This is the second resting place. I'm so excited because hey, I made it! <laughs> <laughs> That's the 360 second step. This is the third resting point and we're not going to sit down. There are two more resting points before getting to the 660th step. From here, one gets a panoramic view of the ancient town. This is the fourth resting point. That yeah. means we have gone 472 steps. Okay. This is the last resting point. Don't be deceived. We still have 77 steps to go. We're standing on the very last step. That means we've covered 660 steps. From here downwards to where we're coming from is actually 4,700 feet above sea level. That means we've covered 4 kilometers. The journey on the plane path leads to the tourist charlies. A signpost make sure you don't go the wrong direction. We're on top of the hill and my guide, Mr. Edi, has something to share with us about where we are. Oh, thank you very much. Where we are about now is just 5,000 meters above sea level. Now you can see the part of the view. Now you see the, the, the down roof over there. It's the primary school, named Baptist Primary School. From the year 1964, after the independence. Now, the upper group over you see there with red roof, with orange color, there, rock over there, as a new palace, where King's now staying. That ancient palace, there, that new palace over there. So, how long have you been on this job? Um, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not spending, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not spending there, but four, year, ten years here. What is it like? Climbing, going down. Ah, do you very, do this every day? Yeah, I do it every day. It's very How many good. times? Uh, three, four times or five times a day. Are you serious? Yes, yeah, it's good in body. It's natural. So I'm a nice fit man. How old are you? I'm now 22 years old. <laughs> now, if you want to stay at top of hill over here, you have to come along with your food, prepare yourself well. But there's no light here. No light here. We, are, we can provide a, a generator for you. Yeah. A generator. Okay. And then climbing the staircase, what do I really need? Mm, you need water. Okay. Uh, you come along with water to sustain you. When you reach one side, you rest. And two minutes, you start moving. Moving. Moving before you start climbing. But you didn't come with water. You used to it. You see, uh, you, you see, you are fit. I have it on good authority that this story site 
is one of the most beautiful landscapes in the country. It plays host to scientists and field researchers. Filmmakers use it as location for many of their films. Idori Hills have UNESCO's approval as a World Heritage Center. Yes, I had an exciting time going up and down the 660 steps. Idori Hills, awesomely beautiful. <laughs> okay, that's been our offering today. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Chioma Okwara. Please visit our website, www.artandleisure.com.ng. Our Facebook page is Art and Leisure on TV. Like us. <laughs> By God's grace, art and leisure returns next week, same time. Love yourself, love Nigeria.